Okay, so hi, Nandita. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for reaching out and asking um, to speak on f- with us for our radio program. I think the work that you're doing is uh, not as well represented as it should be, but nevertheless, it's incredibly important work and also really great work. Um, so that's let's let's get into it. Uh, do you want to tell uh, the listeners what is the organization that you're a part of, Seniors with Skills? What is it about and what kind of work you do there? For sure. Um, so Seniors with Skills is a 501c3 not-for-profit, and we started off in the United States two years ago, and currently we just got um, approved for not-for-profit status in Canada as well. So before the pandemic, basically the work that we used to do is we had volunteers go into retirement homes and nursing homes and conduct different activities with the seniors. So the two programs that we used to run was our cards and knitting program, as well as our computer training program. So our cards and knitting program consisted of volunteers that went into nursing homes and sat with the seniors and created cards that were then donated to local hospitals and hospices. And we also had our computer training program where volunteers would use their time to go in and teach seniors how to use technology, whether it was tablets, iPads, computers, and to use emails or social media or whatever they were interested in learning. So the point of these programs was to have kind of a way for volunteers to interact with these seniors and combat senior isolation that they face on a daily basis while they're in these retirement homes. And do you only work in retirement homes or do you also work in hospitals, long-term care homes, or even maybe in some cases, some seniors' homes if if they're in their own house? So um, in the past, we've worked with long-term care, nursing homes, and retirement homes. Um, But for our online program that we're currently running, we are looking to expand to any kind of senior care facility. So whether that's hospitals or hospices or assisted living, anything um, that seniors are kind of needing our help with. Okay. Okay. And um, so you have this matching on your website, it says that you uh, volunteers fill out an application form and then you have people who actually work at the organization who are in charge of matching people up. So Mm -hmm. how does the matching process work? How are people matched together? So what we do is we have matching coordinators who will get in touch with the nursing homes or retirement homes or long-term care homes um, based on where the volunteers want to volunteer their time. So it depends on their location and our matching coordinators would usually contact the nursing home staff or the volunteer coordinator. And what we do is we then have all the requirements kind of set out for the volunteers and we tell them what they need to complete in order to start volunteering at that specific retirement homes. But before that, we do have kind of our own training process that the volunteers have to go through with modules um, as well as discrimination, racism, um, sexual harassment modules. And we also have our volunteers complete a police check and a background check as well. Okay. Um, so in, in London, what homes are you partnered with in, in the city? Um, so currently, um, we actually had the cards and knitting program before um, the pandemic running at Rivera um, in London. And right now we're actually launching our online buddy program there as well. So we've just been talking to residents, kind of gauging interest. And um, before we get that started, we currently have a video making program running there where a few of our volunteers create um, live videos. And what they do is they kind of record these and we send this into partnering nursing homes and retirement homes. Um, because a lot of retirement homes have told us about how they are very understaffed during this time and they can't kind of facilitate those live video calls. So mm-hmm. we still want to get to the seniors who are kind of feeling socially isolated and want some activities to do. So we have our volunteers film, creative videos like sing-alongs, crafting demonstrations, and then we are sending that over to our retirement home partner in London. So I, uh, I have a question. Um, well, I have a lot of questions, but here's one that I, I'm really curious about the answer. Um, in your experience and perhaps um, people within your organization can, or, or the work that your organization does can speak to this more broadly, but um, aside from the physical caretakers and the, the staff who work in these homes and nursing homes and retirement homes who are there to just, you know, be supervisors and, and also be physical caretakers, is there, are there enough workers there who can maybe also look out for these seniors' mental and emotional well-being? Because, you know, your, your organization is there to combat social isolation which falls within that umbrella but in terms of like professional registered um mental and emotion like mental health care workers is there do they have a presence in retirement homes at all is that a normal thing or no 
So from my personal experience and other volunteers who we've been working with who have been into these retirement homes, um, some places actually do have social workers who come in to kind of visit these seniors and talk to them, see how things are going. So um, from my personal experience, a couple places that I volunteered at in the past, sometimes when we go in for recreational activities, there'll be these kind of social workers um, along with the nursing staff that would come in and just go around and sit with the seniors and kind of do these activities with them because some of them, their families don't come to visit that often. So they get paired with these social workers who come in on kind of, I guess, an often basis to kind of visit them and talk to them. Um, and we've also seen kind of the nursing staff interact with the seniors a lot as well. So usually the nursing staff knows all of the seniors on their floor. They're constantly with them. They interact with them a lot. So I think that's also a great way where kind of the nursing homes and retirement homes try to combat that isolation that they're probably facing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what kind of technical needs do you have uh, and how do you fulfill them? Um, so for our program, this program specifically that we're running right now, um, a lot of nursing homes that we've contacted or retirement homes have told us about how technology has been an issue because they only have so many iPads or tablets or computers that they can use. And right now they're also facilitating calls with family members. So trying to facilitate calls with volunteers as well has been an issue. So what we're doing currently is we are actively fundraising to possibly buy iPads or tablets and donate them to our partnering retirement homes. So um, we have actually started donating to some places where we have started partnering with and we're looking to kind of combat that technological barrier to reach out to as many seniors as possible. Okay, so you're asking for donations from folks who can donate physical iPads or are you looking for more monetary donations? So right now we're actually accepting either. So on our website, we do have a link to donate um, kind of monetary donations. So if you can, any contribution that people can make is great. And if you are able to donate iPads or tablets, you can always reach out to us through our website and let us know and we can facilitate that as well. Okay, cool. Um, so in the COVID-19 pandemic, um, I'm sure that in the beginning when social isolation and quarantining and all that started, um, there must have been a problem with people with social isolation just soaring because like that was felt sort of around you know any demographic age person um now with the extremely um unfortunate and and in a lot of in most cases just disturbing news that have come out of what has happened to a lot of nursing homes and retirement homes and um can you, is, is there any way that you can um, maybe talk about how things have evolved, like the, the situation in, in a lot of these homes, how it has evolved from the beginning of the pandemic to now? So I feel like a lot of places that we were contacting to begin with when we first launched this program back in April, a lot of places were talking about how they were very overwhelmed at that time and how they didn't have enough staff members and how family couldn't visit anymore. So the residents were starting to get a little bit impatient and there was a lot going on. But recently what I've noticed is we are still currently trying to actively reach out to retirement homes mm -hmm. um, and nursing homes. And a lot more places are a little bit more willing to kind of start this program or implement some sort of kind of virtual way for volunteers to connect with seniors. Mm -hmm. Because when initially when this pandemic started and they were on lockdown, their main kind of priority was facilitating calls with family members. But now that they kind of have that going and they're kind of used to doing that, um, I feel like they're able to kind of adapt a little bit more to kind of have these volunteer connections and start fostering this. So I think um, over time they have been able to develop kind of more um, restrictions in place or just better protocol to kind of work with the seniors and make sure that they're not just talking to, you know, maybe their family and they're able to kind of offer um, recreational activities through virtual platforms. So is there... Uh... Is there often a, a resistance or not a resistance, but is there often a hesitation to join in with a program like this on the part of the administrators or the, the people who are in charge of what happens in the retirement homes? So uh, most of them that I've called are very interested in the program, but the only issue that they've been telling us about is the fact that, as I mentioned, technology is a problem because they don't have enough to facilitate these calls and the mm -hmm. amount of staff that they have, because during this time, they can only have so many staff members in the building. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them aren't able to actually go in and interact with the patients. So they can only have this many nursing staff or this many um, 
kind of recreation managers actually interact with the seniors who are in the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And so what they've been telling us is that they would love to start this program when they can kind of have more people in the building so that they can have more people with the seniors kind of going around bringing the technology to them and setting up the program. Okay. Um, so in the wake of what's been happening, you know, it's, it's kind of been like a huge scandal, uh, for lack of better words, in both Canada and the U.S. And now there's, um, I recently saw that there was actually a class action lawsuit that's started at um, uh, a nurse, I, think, I believe it's a long-term care home in Woodbridge. And there was this big report that came out, you know, that was brought to, um, Doug Ford did a press conference on it. And, you know, it's, it's seen as sort of one of the biggest government failings, both in Canada and in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, how does that impact the work of your organization and maybe even the, the mandate or the interests of your organization moving forward? So, yeah, I think our main goal and our priority when we did start this organization, so our founder, Jaya, she started this um, back in 2018, as I mentioned. And the main goal and the goal that we've still been kind of going upon is to combat senior isolation. And with all the news that we've been seeing currently about kind of the conditions in nursing homes and retirement homes, I think that's kind of more prevalent than ever now, especially mm -hmm. during this time when they can visit family, they can visit friends. And the few nursing homes that we have been kind of partnering with, when we do talk to these seniors, they talk about how um, their kids or their friends have to kind of, kind of do window visiting now because they can't come in and they can only mm -hmm. talk to them on the phone. So that makes that isolation a lot worse because to begin with, um, these seniors are kind of stuck in these retirement homes and they don't really get to go visit their kids often. And they have to wait for someone to come and see them. So during a time like this, when they can't have anyone come and see them, I think our organization's mission is a whole lot more important and we need to kind of continue to combat that senior isolation through any way that we can. And right now, because technology is the only way that we can kind of communicate with these seniors, I think this program is a great way to continue our mission. Right. Right. So are you seeing um, more people wanting to join this program or showing interest in bringing it to a home or, you know, a, a place where a family member that they might have resides like are you seeing a bigger community outreach to your organization so we've actually had a lot of people in terms of our volunteer interest side we've had a lot of volunteers who are interested um and most of our volunteers are kind of youth so high school university students and we've had a lot of volunteers reach out to us and kind of ask about the application process um and in terms of nursing homes or retirement homes we have had some people reach out about contacting family members who are currently at home and who are self-isolating mm -hmm. so we do have interest from people who have family members um, or seniors who are maybe living alone and would like to connect with a volunteer um, and in terms of nursing homes um, recently we are starting to see a lot more interest than previously back when we launched first mm -hmm. so when we call them now they're a lot more interested and they want more details and they do they are interested in kind of implementing this program a lot more mm. yeah because I think even something that is left out of this, the, the conversation on how we can solve this problem or what even addressing the problem, what even it is, um, is that mentally and emotionally, you know, it, imagine being, first of all, a senior in, in a retirement or a nursing home where there is an outbreak or the fear of an outbreak. But on top of that, um, you know, losing your friends who reside with you in that home because there's been, you know, majority of, of the cases in Ontario that have been attributed of, of deaths that have been attributed to people, first of all, living in their retirement homes, but also just above, you know, a certain age bracket, mostly in the elderly age bracket is, is really overwhelming, you know? And so it's, um, it's very clear that the, where the problem lies and who it's been affecting the most. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but, you know, it's it's also just personal tragedy that residents who, um, you know, who either survive or stay safe from the virus, they still have to deal with the fact that they have lost their, they have, they may have lost, you know, their friends, their closest friends, their, their loved ones as, as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, what, um aside from a, an organization like yours, is there a push to be giving these seniors some sort of mental, emotional, social support in, in dealing with the aftermath of this virus affecting them so harshly? 
So I think in terms of volunteer organizations overall, um, after this pandemic, I feel like the kind of area that we really do need to focus on, well, during this and after this is senior care and mm -hmm. senior homes or nursing homes. Because even before, as I mentioned, they were facing severe social isolation when they were in these nursing homes. And personally, when I used to go and volunteer, a lot of them would talk about how they haven't had anyone who visited them, um, who, who has visited them in a couple months. So especially now during this time when they can't have anyone, and even their friends who they live beside, they can't kind of go and see them or talk to them. And they don't have those recreational activities that were running beforehand that does take a toll on their mental, physical, and emotional health. Mm -hmm. So I think during this time, as well as after, we do need kind of professional support being offered to these seniors in these, um, in these nursing homes to kind of help combat that isolation, as well as the aftermath and the effects that this has had on their, their mental health. Is that, a, um, is that a priority for mental health organizations, hospitals, mental health workers um, from like the government or the policy side, is that a priority to, to be providing these services and, and make sure that they are provided in nursing homes, long-term ter long care homes, in, in, um, in the elderly community? So personally, um, from kind of experiences or what I've seen, I think majority of our mental health care is not really targeted towards the elderly as much as it should be. Mm -hmm. um, but, it's, but now during this time, I'm starting to see a lot more kind of um, news articles or stories or a lot more things that are kind of centered around the elderly. Mm -hmm. So hopefully in the future, we can kind of expand the mental health that is offered to them because there's a lot of awareness being raised around mental health concerns um, towards the elderly. So as I mentioned, their emotional, mental, and physical health. And mm -hmm. there's been a lot of news articles, especially after um, the Ontario um, news press released the list of retirement homes that were going through a hard time during this time. Mm -hmm. There has been a lot of attention towards kind of the senior nursing home sector. So I'm hoping that that will bring kind of a positive change afterwards or even now and that'll kind of make the mental health um, organizations combat senior isolation and start to focus on that a lot more mm -hmm. um it it also seems like there is um kind of a major burden on a lot of healthcare or, or um nursing home and, and retirement home care workers because Again, you know, they have to be physical caretakers. They have to be um, making sure that, uh, you know, kind of like supervisors, I guess, making sure that things are going okay and in different areas of the home that they work in. And um, I'm sure that, that they also build emotional and social relationships with the people who are living there, with the residents. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, that it's, it's a lot to be kind of the, the mental, physical psychological um, person or uh, reference to so many different people. And as you were saying, they're, also, they're already very understaffed. Um, so for the, for the homes that are perhaps unable to have enough social workers um, to go in, is, is the organization also considering maybe um, doing some more training or or working closer with the, the staff in order to better help them provide kind of services which are not as um in abundance in the homes so i think especially now that has started to become a lot more of our focus so when mm. we do reach out to um, a lot of these recreation managers or recreation staff we ask them what um is needed right now and what they think would best benefit their seniors. So that's kind of how we started our video making initiative. So we reached out to a retirement home in Toronto and they told us about how they, they would love to start the video um, chatting program, but because of not having enough staff members, they're not able to have one person with one senior and having one iPad and just kind of having that go around. Mm -hmm. So we suggested, um, you know, if they had any ideas on what they think would benefit the seniors, they could reach out to us. So what they told us was that the seniors still love doing recreational activities and they do have kind of TVs that they can project things onto and they can kind of have iPads put into rooms and play videos for the seniors rather than having someone there facilitating calls. And so they asked if we would be able to kind of facilitate something like that where our volunteers could do a dem demo on kind of a crafting activity or sing-alongs. So we adapted to, to what they needed and that's how we came up with our video making initiative where we have our volunteers create these videos that the seniors can watch. And in a way it still helps combat the isolation because it makes them feel like they have something to do. And we also kind of reach out to their nursing homes and retirement homes and ask if any of the seniors 
you know, have any preferences for videos or if they enjoyed a video and we could send them something personal. So I feel like kind of reaching out to these nursing homes and long-term care homes and asking them what is needed during this time or overall what is needed in senior care from volunteers is the best approach so that we can combat that senior isolation and help them in ways where they need the most help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and have any of your partner organizations been on the, um, kind of on the watch for less than favorable um, practices during this COVID pandemic? I'm not asking you to out anybody, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but have any of these, have any of the retirement or nursing homes or long-term care homes that are part of your, your roster of homes, have any of them been reportedly, um, you know, not living up to the challenge of, of this current time? Uh, so the ones that we're, ones that we're currently partnered with, none of them have actually had any issues with outbreaks or any uh, okay. less than ideal conditions going on. So yeah. they've all been doing well and they do have kind of updates on their social media and things like that. And we've been seeing, you know, people have been t tested negative for COVID. So there hasn't been any concerns with the retirement homes or nursing homes that we're currently partnering with. And okay. we hope that in the future, the ones we do partner with, if they do have any concerns that they're able to deal with that and kind of put the senior care above everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, also, how much do you interact with the families of these seniors? Um, so currently, we don't have any kind of live person-to-person -person interaction with the families, but the families are aware of what is going on, and we obviously need to get consent from the seniors' families before we can start the volunteers video chatting with the seniors. So mm -hmm. usually what we do is we reach out to the nursing home coordinator, the recreation manager, and they will facilitate that process of getting consent from the families and getting consent from the seniors. And then they'll let us know kind of who's consented and who hasn't. Um, so we don't really have interactions with the families because the families are not able to visit right now. Um, but the seniors do tell us stories about their families and kind of when they come and how they're calling them. But we're hoping that in the future when they do open up visits to families, um, which hopefully starts to happen soon, that we will be able to meet some of these family members that the seniors have been telling us about. Okay, so with the, the gradual reopening of services and restaurants and businesses, um, are you going to be, are these retirement homes and, and nursing homes going to be opening up soon and are, is SWS going in, going, planning to go in and start the, um, like the buddy program once again? So um, I'm hoping that they open up, you know, soon, but I don't think nursing homes and retirement homes are looking to open up. Uh, recent, and anytime soon because mm -hmm. um, the seniors are the most vulnerable population mm -hmm. so we don't want to expose them to anything you know sooner than we have to mm -hmm. so obviously they would probably open up I guess to kind of essential family visits or if anyone's not feeling well their family coming in but in terms of volunteers I'm pretty sure they're not going to be opening up and allowing us to go in for a while mm -hmm. so our plan is to continue um, the online buddy program for as long as senior homes and retirement homes are remained closed so um, we're going to kind of run the online buddy program. And then once our volunteers are able to start going back in, when the phase reopening starts for these nursing homes, then we'll slowly have volunteers go back in and do kind of live chats with the seniors. Okay. And um, so lastly, um, how can people in London get involved with the organization and, and best help the organization given any kind of capacity that they have? So um, anyone that's interested in anything that we're doing currently or anything that we did, you know, pre-COVID, they can always visit our website, which is seniorswithskills.org, and all of our information on volunteering or um, signing up as a nursing home or retirement home that's interested is all there. They can email us, fill out our application forms, um, and London in specific. So we do have a lot of students from Western University on our team. So we are kind of planning on starting a chapter specifically for London, hopefully in the fall, depending on kind of how things go. And since we already have a partnering retirement home that or nursing home that we are working with, we would like to kind of start um, implementing other programs when these retirement homes and nursing homes do start opening up in person for volunteers to go in. So volunteers can always get involved through university or through our website. We're accepting volunteers of all ages so um, they can apply. And if any nursing homes are interested, of course, they could always contact us and we can reach out and try to implement the program. Okay. And sorry, I actually have, th this is my last question. Um, what made you want to be involved in doing work like this? So I have been volunteering with seniors for about four years now. So I started when I was in grade nine. Um, and so my first volunteering position was for my community service hours. So I went into a nursing home and I was doing bingo where I kind of just sat with the seniors and helped them out with bingo. But um, after I went in and kind of did that on a weekly basis, I started to realize how 
so many of these seniors were facing severe social isolation and just seeing a few of us volunteers go in every week excited them so much. And seeing that kind of change that we could make in their day and how happy that it made them, it made me realize that working with seniors was something that I really enjoyed doing. And it not only kind of gave me a sense of fulfillment, just kind of being around someone and helping them and making them happy, I also realized that the smallest things that we could do, just going in for an hour every week and playing bingo with them, made them so happy. And they would tell us so many stories about, you know, what they did in the past, their families, and it was just an enjoyable experience for both me as a volunteer and the senior as well. So that's why I kind of wanted to continue working. And then when I found out about Seniors with Skills um, almost a year, a year, a year and a half ago, I wanted to join and kind of be a part of the change that they were making to end this severe senior isolation that I've been kind of seeing on, with firsthand experience from my volunteering in the past. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. That's awesome work that you're doing and keep it up. Um, just I, because I didn't ask you to introduce yourself at the beginning, um, would you like to provide a little introduction of yourself so you get to introduce yourself to the listeners? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Nadita and I'm currently a th going into third year at Western University and I'm studying medical sciences. Um, and I've been involved in seniors with skills for the past year and a half, as I mentioned. And I love working with seniors. I love working with the vulnerable population. So in the past, I volunteered with kids and seniors. So this is just a great way to kind of help out the vulnerable population, especially during this time. And that's kind of the main reason that I'm a part of this organization. I helped kind of spearhead this program and launch this program. So we're super excited to kind of expand and hopefully get more interest and get more nursing homes and retirement homes that are interested so we can reach out to as many seniors as possible. And even people living at home, because even people who are living alone at home uh, sometimes may feel isolated and just want someone to talk to. So we are really looking forward to expanding this program. That's awesome. And so you have a chapter based at Western University? Yeah, so uh, we have been partnering with the retirement home at Western University since last year. And we're hoping to kind of expand the chapter and start it officially at the university next year. Awesome. That's great. Again, thank you so much for joining us, Nandita. And thank you for the work that you and your organization do. Um, it's serving a really important purpose that, um, you know, we can all definitely pitch in, in in some way. So appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me on. No problem. Hope you have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bye.